got it. <laughs> hey guys, uh, you might have seen my uh, first video there uh, with at Hannah, the uh, Canadian Shark Shooter Classic. Uh, today I'm with Ryan McLean and uh, the match director and uh, also works uh, with us here at MDT and we are overhauling my shooting. It, uh, <laughs> that was a challenge uh, for me at that match as you guys have seen. Ah, ah. Oh man, I don't even know where I'm shooting right now. So I think what we're gonna do today is we're gonna get you on my uh, practice rifle. This is a 223 setup. So it's gonna be a lot less recoil. Uh, kind of help you see what you're looking for on those targets or when you do miss a target. Uh, I'm gonna make sure this is fitted up to you. Uh, make sure it's, it sits nice in your body. Um, and just to get you running through the rifle in general. Yeah, so I guess we'll get that started and uh, we'll get you fitted up first. Sounds cool. Good. Let's drop down a position there, get down behind the gun, see what feels comfortable for you to, you, to you, and then I'll make some adjustments so you can get a good sight picture. I think I'm sitting right around, yeah, about 15, 16 power right now, and uh, see where that, how that feels. And then I'll try and see if we can, you know, if we need to tighten up the buttstock or raise or lower the cheek riser, we can. So let's sure. drop down on it and see All what right. you think. How's that feel? Yeah, right about there, I can get a full uh, full sight picture on uh, some kind of target out there. <laughs> okay, What's, uh, how much pressure do you have on your shoulder if you figure right now, is it? Uh... Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to actually gauge the, like, uh, the pressure. Is it like that, so, but it's... or is it like? Yeah, your first, the first one. Okay, so that's pretty good there. Um, get, get down behind the gun again. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna bring this gun over a little bit more for you. So let's try and bring it in right about right about there. Okay. Because you want to try and center that up almost right on your collarbone. Gotcha. So that it, you get centered up on your body. Because right now it's gonna send that that recoil down your back more centered. Gotcha. So you're gonna be able to see that that um, allows you now. Now try and get on the gun again and right. see how see how that feels. Okay. No, I see a difference. 100. percent I'm able to kind of drop. Like my eye almost already seems in line with exactly. the scope. So yeah, because before I was way out here on the outside yep. and then I'm bringing my head over. So that actually, okay. So more on the the pec, but below the collarbone or on yeah. the collarbone? Below or on, wherever you feel comfortable, whatever right. feels good. Just make sure it's more in line with the center of your body. Yeah. That feels yeah. pretty comfortable right there. Right there, uh, I get a full sight picture right there. Okay, so let's uh, drop your finger on the trigger there. Okay. It's, it's, uh, it's unloaded right now. Right. So we're gonna dry fire here. When you get in position. Okay, how'd that feel? So pretty, far, yeah, good. Pretty light trigger on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's a two stage, so uh, you might have to take a little bit to get used to that. Um, take, take a few more, see how it goes. Okay. I can definitely tell already, like I know it's jumping ahead, but when you were saying, you know, that the rifle is balanced, you know, to you, even with me behind it, with how you've got the weight set up and everything, um, even on a round gate, like we've got today, it's, there's, there's barely any like wobble already. I can already tell the difference from <laughs> from when I was trying to get on sight picture, you know, at uh, at Hannah. A well balanced uh, gun helps a lot. It doesn't even have to be a heavy gun; just a well balanced gun um, makes a big difference. Feel pretty comfortable with that? Yeah, I yeah. think so. I think uh, that feels pretty good. Okay, cool. Okay, so we'll uh, we'll get set up then uh, with the target cams and stuff like that. And uh, I think what we're going to do is we're going to work on uh, target acquisition first because that's the, really the biggest part of can't find the target, you can't shoot the damn thing. That makes so, sense. <laughs> and uh, it's definitely one of the biggest things I see people struggle with. So let's uh, let's focus on that first then. Okay, All right. cool. Down here, I've got four targets, uh, two beside each other. Uh, so there's just two different locations we're gonna be shooting at. Uh, what I usually look for when I'm looking downrange is I look for identifying features in the landscape. So for example, downrange here, I can see I've got a curve at the bottom of this road or basically the bottom of the road, that's where I'm going to be looking for uh, to aim my gun towards that point. That's my target one. Target two, I know is up in another gravel spot up above uh, near the top of the back of the road. And so basically what I'm going to be looking for is I'm going to look for that, that gray spot at the back of the road, kind of to the right, and it's beside a tower as well. Gotcha. So identifying a couple features is always good because you get in situations where you can't get into the actual position to shoot from. Uh, so you kind of need to, you know, say for example, there's a tree that looks like a mushroom or a tree that looks like it has a crew cup top off of it, right. you know, or brown area grass. Like just identify something if you can. Right. If you can't identify something, <laughs> uh, then you need to know where the target is in general and make sure you don't get lost in the other targets possibly. So when I go and I go to get into position, 
I know that my target one is gonna be, like I said, at the bottom of that road, kind of a little bit of a T area there. And when I move into my position, I'm gonna be having that gun land directly pointed at it. So when I get down behind my gun, behind my scope, I should have it in my sight picture. Right. So if I go to, so I'll lift this up, go like that, go forward, drop my bag down. You see my gun is literally not leaving that target. So when I get on position, I knew exactly where it was. I was sitting on the left side of that road. Right. And now I'm on the, on the, uh, I think it's a 10 inch, I got a 10 and an eight inch down there at 390 yards. So that's what I'm sitting on right now. Gotcha, giving yourself the advantage to essentially point where you want to shoot. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, aim the gun and then aim the gun at the target. Right. And then get into your position. Because if you, if you go and you set down your gun, you know, I see guys in prone positions like this all the time. They'll go and they'll set their gun down and it's sitting like this. Right. The target's over there, the gun's pointed that way. Right. So now you've just wasted, I don't know, anywhere from, I've seen anywhere up to 30 seconds wasted of trying to get that gun into position over here find that target now you're under stress because you just had that beep go off right and you're trying to struggle and fa as fast as you can to find that target and you're probably going to go past it one or two times because you're just going too fast right so that's that's my biggest tip for finding targets especially on the into your first position when you get into that first position i like to have my first round Downrange on that target within 10 seconds as a new shooter, you probably should try and push for like under 15. Gotcha. Um, so that's kind of my, that's my theory on target acquisition and, uh, and first shots off uh, downrange. All right. Cool. Okay. So we'll try this out. Yeah. So take the rifle. So like when I, when I start with my rifle, go, go for it. when I start with my rifle in my hand, ready to go, like I've done all my pre-checks here. I made sure my windage is on or to zero if or dialed in if I have it dialed in. My dope's correct. My parallax is set properly. Okay. And you know, my hand is literally in position ready to shoot. Mm. Right? So I've got my thumb up on the thumb rest here. I've made sure my safety's forward. If you have a safety on it, and you know, I take my hand and I hold this bag so my hand is exactly where I want it to be to set it down. So when I go to set this down, it's really bang, bang on that target. Mm. Right there. Gotcha. Okay. Already learned something new. Yeah, man. <laughs> All right, let's do cool. it. Here you go. All right. I, uh, I don't even hold it into my shoulder because I'm not gonna set it down on my shoulder, right? Oh, right, so yeah, it's kinda so like just, Yeah, just have, it, just have it in your armpit like that. Yeah. Comfortable, ready to go, safe. You know, I'm gonna drop a magazine in there. Okay. So shooting the 223 here without the muzzle brake, so you do get a little more recoil. Okay. Because um, it's only a 223. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Uh, so what we'll do is I'm gonna get this timer set. So I got 15 seconds on the par time, and the goal of this is to get in that first position on target, round, off, down, on the target in 15 seconds. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Stand by. Okay, so the next question is, did you see where you missed? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you had that first round off in about 13 seconds. Okay. Uh, a couple of little things I'm gonna say, say is that when you set that bag down, obviously this isn't your gun, so you're not probably not gonna be as used to it. When you set that bag down, you actually set your mag into that bag right there. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you might've found it wasn't quite as stable as it could have been, right? That's fair, yep. Okay, so what we're gonna do, is gonna try that again, set that gun down kind of behind it. Okay and bring it forward, okay? So that you're you're coming into it more on this way. Because when you set it down before, you set it down like this, or sorry, like that. You see how that kind oh, of yeah, yeah. changes Which a bit? Which makes sense, because yeah, when I first dropped into the, uh, looking through the scope and to the reticle, I was, I was high, yeah. majorly high, to, yes. to, find, to find the target. Yes, exactly. And the other thing is too, this could jam up on your bag and make your feeding not feed properly. Okay, gotcha. So let's try that one more time. See where it went yeah i was high that one you're high okay. i was high 
Now you did it a little faster. They got it off in about 11.21. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say that you were definitely canted. Look at your, look at the laser, yep. look at the bubble there. So you see how it's red. Right. You want to be like you're so far canted. That's probably what took you off target. Okay. So one, everything adds up. Consistency. You know, like if it was in there, you might have been on. Right. Um, I'm gonna take a tenth out of this elevation. Uh, are you holding on that small target or the big target? Uh, the right one, which I believe is the bigger one. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a tenth out of that. We'll try it one more time here. Yep. Okay. And I'm gonna say when you go into position, like try and make it as fluid as possible so that bag goes down, rifle goes down, you're in position. Okay. Okay. Having that economy of movement is crucial. Makes sense. Ah, yeah, I see what you're saying. Impact. Got you off in 12.50. Nice. Definitely right. a good start. Okay. Yeah, so still, I, I see what you're saying already still, like it was a little bit choppy on the prep, but uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, just those tricks alone. I definitely tried to keep the rifle more centered, you know, or vertical. Yep. And uh, yeah. <laughs> well, let me uh, let me run through it real quick, see how fast I can sure. do it. Just to show you like my, how, how I flow with it. Yep. And kind of get a better, get a good idea there. Seven point four five. Yeah, so that comes down to just knowing where to set that gun at, knowing how to set it in position. Um, if you notice too, when I when I started, my hand was up here, so I'm not down here with my gun, my bag down in this position. I'm, right. I've got it ready to go. Yeah. It gave me that extra. I actually, I took like an extra second and a half, two seconds to get on on the target properly and check to see what was going on down there. Right. And then squeezed off my shot. All right. So getting those positions quickly as possible saves you a lot of time and gives you that time back to you to get those shots off. Yeah. So that's why I, I practice my getting in position and acquiring targets majority of the time when I'm practicing. Okay, so get down behind that gun. All right. And we're gonna really focus on the trigger control here now. All right. Uh, because you're definitely jumping on that trigger too fast and you're jumping off it too fast as right. well. Fair. So this is a two stage trigger. Um, I'm gonna pop this mag out. I'm yep. gonna show you real quick. That when you see, you'll see here that when I pull it, it picks up that first stage there. Yep. Then it hits a nice wall, and then you break the break the shot. So I I like my trigger. I like to as I'm breathing out, I bring that trigger in, and then as I hit the bottom of my breath, that's when I break that trigger at. Oh, okay. So my personal the way I do is I, I get into a cadence of as I breathe in, I'm cycling the bolt. As I breathe out, I'm closing the bolt. As I get my finger on the trigger slash target. I'm breathing out, click. Okay. Okay. And when you follow through, get on that trigger, click, stay on that trigger so you can see where your shots are, see where you're landing them at. Uh, if, you, if you miss or if you landed on the steel, you can really see it cranks one way or the other. Right. That allows you to adjust for that wind as well. Okay. Sounds good. So, cool. We'll, get it, we'll try and focus on that now. All right. Okay, so okay. Do, it, do it like you normally do. All right. And then I'm gonna correct you, okay? All right, so just take my shot? Yeah, take your shot. All right. Okay, so see how you jumped off that trigger real fast? You actually jumped on that trigger pretty fast too. Right. Okay. So let's really focus on, as you breathe out, okay. take in that slack on the trigger. Now, on a, on a single stage trigger, I just get my fingers set on it. Right. But on a two stage, I like it because it kind of lets you take up that first sock. Okay. And then you can breathe out, finish out that breath, and break that trigger nicely. Right. And you stayed on there nice. So did you, and try and look for that impact before you start moving, okay? It looks like I hit it a little a little left, and just by doing the breathing and the trigger pull, like I, was, I, it, I can tell the difference. It is actually, it sounds hokey. <laughs> it really does. Cause I hit it on the last one too though, but still like just the control I can in a, in a high pressure situation. Yeah, I, you can pick that up. So yeah. the, and really that trigger control comes down to just lots of dry fire, lots of practice and making sure you break that habit of slapping the trigger. Yeah, no, the, the, the pole itself like much, it's, it just feels cleaner. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's uh, follow on, go on to some other stuff. Um, 
I think what we'll do now is we're gonna go through like the the three main positions that you're gonna be shooting in, right? Okay. So I call this like a high standing, a bent standing, and then a kneeling position. And uh, we might even be able to get into a low kneeling here. Um, these are really the majority of positions you're gonna get into. And the same thing uh, applies that you wanna make sure you're nice and square behind that gun, you're managing that recoil, you're following through. Um, but we're gonna go through these slower. We're not gonna really focus on getting into those positions on time, okay? Yep. So we're just gonna go through them and kind of work through them. What I'm gonna have you do is I'm gonna have you um, show me how you get in the position and I'll try and get you fixed up into a better position. Sounds good. If we need to. Yeah, yeah okay? definitely. Okay. All right. Ready? Yep. Okay, drop into position. Okay. Okay, was... so stay in that position there. Yep. First off, looked like you came off that trigger pretty quick. Okay, yep. Uh, Which was a big issue at, uh, <laughs> at, at, Hannah. at, at Hannah, yeah. Okay, so the other thing is to, like, take a look here, take a look around here. I'm going to drop your mag out. Yep. Look around here and see where your, your bag is sitting on your gun. Oh, yeah. There's... So, <laughs> so the, the idea with this plate, or any kind of, you know, just balance in general, I like this plate because it gives me a extra, little extra balance there. Right. Is you have that over the center of your barricade, right? Right. So right now, if you let go of that gun, where's it go? Yeah, it's just gonna drop. Yeah, it drops, right? So it's yep. rear, super rear heavy. So if we bring that gun forward, set it there. Right. It should sit pretty much where it needs to be. It so. could be the bag that I've dropped on it too, but yeah, yeah, like you said, you got it right there to where it's balanced. Right there, it's balanced at where it needs to be, right? So, uh, so that was the big thing I found. How was your wobble zone? Well, now that makes sense, because yeah, trying to keep the back end of the rifle on target because I found that, again, now being able to think about it, it's constantly, the muzzle rise is constantly trying to get up on me. So I'm trying to fight fight the rifle, essentially. Okay, so let the rifle do the work for you. Right. So basically what we're gonna have you do now is focus on getting into that position, making sure the rifle's positioned on the bag properly, and then uh, take some of that pressure off your shoulder. Look like you're putting a lot of pressure into the gun. Okay. Kind of take that pressure back off and kind of just like let it sit there, like hold it and make sure you can manage the recoil on it, but don't like muscle it in. Okay. Okay, we'll try that one more time. Sounds good. And try and uh, focus on that follow through and see where that shot landed at, okay? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna say you're probably gonna wanna favor a little bit right, right now. All right. Okay, ready? Yep. And go. So we're getting you to move at about 70% speed, right? Yep. Okay. Good positioning on your knees and your legs like that, like that. Impact. Now, still jumped off that trigger and still slapped right. the trigger a little right. bit. So I, that's definitely one of those things you're gonna have to focus on when you're dry firing quite a bit. Right. But uh, you, do you feel the difference in that? 100%. Yeah, yeah. the uh, just, I think I still, on that one, I was still leaning too much into it. Um, but as far as having, just, just using the barricade stop, on the rifle itself and ha and moving it forward on the bag, that eliminated, it, I can see that my positioning still, it wants to drop, it's not perfectly squared on the bag, but even just that one tip of just moving it forward. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Taking that little extra time just to make sure you're, you're positioned properly. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Cool, let's uh, let's do it one more time and okay. just, and like I said, take that pressure off there and really focus on that steady trigger pull. pull. And, and staying on the gun and following through. Okay. Cause I want to see if you can tell where that, that round is landing on that piece of steel down there, okay? All right. Like I said, just try it at about 70% speed. Sounds good. And uh, so you can really focus on those other aspects. All right. Okay, and go. Breathe out, easy trigger pull. Oh no. See where it went? <laughs> uh, I think to the, uh, yeah, I think it was off to the right. It was high and right. Okay, I well, still, even though I left my my trigger finger on there, I still, I jerked it. Yeah. It, it was, it, it's, uh, dry fire practice is definitely gonna be in my future. <laughs> Sounds good, man. It's, it's cheap and free too. <laughs> so yeah, so when you set the bag on here, you set it down and you kind of went like that which is kind of a waste of time because realistically you set your gun on there 
and you do the same thing. Right. So when I do the same thing, it settles it onto the bag, which then also settles it into the barricade, and I can walk away from it and it sits there. Yeah, makes sense. Okay, so what we're gonna have you do is we're gonna run through that a few more times so you get comfortable with it at okay. that, like, you know, 70, 80% speed there. Um, if you need to slow down, slow down a little more. Okay. If you start getting more comfortable, we'll start speeding up and then we'll run you on the clock and uh, see how you do, okay? All right, sounds good. Cool. Pick up the gun. Yep. We'll uh, get this cleared out, and yep. we got a 15 second par time here for you. If you can make it in 15 seconds, I'll be happy. All right. <laughs> the okay. pressure. Okay. Stand by. Good flow. Or nice, easy trigger pull. Nice job. Got you on for 12 seconds. Nice. Good job, man. Very nice. Thank you. Cool. Okay. Shooter, stand by. What would you say you could get it in? I figured 9 to 10 seconds. All right. 8.29. 8.29. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, let's move on to the uh, kneeling position and uh, work through that. All right, sounds good. Cool. So it's gonna be a kneeling position. So I'm gonna let you get into it, see how you feel. Okay. Um, if you're if you're feeling really comfortable, take the shot. If you're like feeling totally unstable, we'll stop All and right. get you more stable first. Yeah. Okay. No worries. Okay, and go. Yep. No. Okay. I'm gonna stop you right off the bat. Yep. Bring up your right knee. Okay. Okay. Get your body nice. Bring your body over towards this side a bit more, and get your uh, now get into position. Okay. And bring your whole body forward actually as well. Yep. So you're kind of centered over your knee. Okay. Okay. You now you see how you have your 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 arm on your knee there. Yep. And it kind of gets it really nice and stable. It is, yep. Much use, better. Yeah, use that front hand to stabilize it as well. And you can, uh, like I said, reduce that pressure off on the shoulder there a bit. And yep. you'll be able to get nice and stable, right? You, you bring your wobble zone down quite a bit. Yep, definitely. Yeah, looking at the target, looking at the camera, it looks like you're pretty good there. So let's uh, let's try and pull, set, a, set, take a shot. Get okay. in that position, take your shot. So start over? No, no, just take oh. a shot. All right. You got to work on that trigger control. So. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to get you to pull that trigger as much as possible. Makes two, sense. Two, two, three is cheap, and that's why I like to use it for practice. Oh, no. Did you go off the left edge? Uh, ah, dang it. I'm not as good as the uh, watching the rounds as you are. All right. Um, I'm not going to lie on that one. I don't know. Don't uh, know. Okay, well, let's start it over again, and okay. let's, let's try and get into this position. All right. Going, if you can avoid doing a double knee down in my opinion it allows you to have that back your right knee for that back support makes sense plus you're not wasting it's all about time too yeah because now you're you try and get out of that double kneeling position there was a match director i know that liked 90 seconds yeah i i, I don't i don't do 90 second stages did you oh, no, no, maybe I, do not. Minute, I do minute 45 i give you a little bit i give you extra 15 <laughs> seconds okay so sounds let's try better when i say minute 45 as well it does <laughs> it does okay all right okay uh ready yep. and go all right Yeah, good, good placement of the gun there. Push her forward a little bit more. Let's bring this in a little bit more as well. Okay, uh, all right. Yeah, so bring your, center your body up a bit more. Yep. Yeah. So that's gonna allow that recoil to transfer down. You're gonna be able to follow those shots a lot nicer too. Okay. Breathe out, take up your trigger. I don't know what. That's wind. Okay. So uh, favor right. Shot over? Yeah, no, no, take another shot. Let's make sure. Like I said, you need trigger, trigger time. See? Uh, okay. Yep. <laughs> There's a little bit of right wind. So <laughs> once you get all this stuff down, then you got to start paying attention to the wind as well. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Always more. All right. Yeah. Okay. So let's try this again here. Yep. Okay. And go. Make sure to hold a little bit of wind on that one too, right? Eh? Right.
Yep, that's good, yep. There you go. Okay, I think you're feeling pretty comfortable with that, so let's uh, let's push to 100% on that and see if we can get you in there under around that 15 seconds as well. Sounds good. Okay, yeah, you did it in 16.65. Not bad. All right. Because there is a lot of movement there to get into that position. Okay. You want to try it one more time? Yeah, 100%. Well, so what was your struggle on that one? Um, finding the target. So okay. I ended up, uh, I think I was off the bag more than I wanted to when I first set up before I actually looked through the scope. And okay. then I ended up being way up the track. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so that, that ate probably a good, at least at least a second for sure, obviously. Oh yeah, it was, yeah, yeah, at least that. So, okay, as long as you can identify what your problem was, we can fix it for the next one. Okay. okay? So let's try it one more time. All right. Fourteen fifty. Oh, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, were you able to find the target better that time? Um, position building building the initial uh, position is going to be something uh, repetitive, but uh, it's still I kind of I actually repeated almost the same thing, but I was able to get I was just able to get on uh, target faster, and then with the trigger control actually, I found that first stage first. Yeah. And then completed it, but did it at the bottom of my breath and. I remember to hold for wind. <laughs> Usually I can get around 10 seconds. So All right, shooter stand by. Standing by. Oh, 17 seconds. No, I'm just kidding. That's 8.38. 8.38, <laughs> that's not bad. So. Uh, so if you saw, like, when I was getting that position, I was already moving downwards. Right. Like, when I was setting the bag on, and you you were up a little more to get that in there. But, like, I was already starting to move down to the position to make sure that I was flowing as fast as I could. Right. So it's, like I said, economy of movement gives you that extra time for those to take that extra little bit of, you know, half a second to two seconds on that shot. Right. And that was still what you said, 8.38. 8, 8. 8. Yeah. So I'm, I'm happy with that. Nice. So, so I guess we'll try and get down here if we can and uh, we'll go from there. All right. So uh, give me two seconds. This is, the, this is probably by far my least favorite position is like a double low kneeling because it's uncomfortable. Uh, I personally like free recoil them most of the time or damn near free recoil them. So like basically I'm taking as much pressure off that gun as possible and I'm stabilizing it with my front hand and trying to mitigate that recoil with my front hand as much as possible as well. Okay. So basically like my back of my body is just here holding it and trying to stay stable and trying to get a good sight picture. And then it's not really free recoil cause I'm not like coming off the gun and like squeezing the trigger like that or anything. Right. Um, but it's, you're trying to eliminate any twist or, or movement in the rifle with your body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Just because like I'm a bigger dude, right? So it's un it's fairly unstable for me to shoot this way. Okay. Um, if I can, <laughs> I'll usually grab my tripod if it's if it's within reason. Oh, okay. Like or if they're super small targets, I'll definitely grab my tripod and take the extra time with the tripod to get in that position. Because with a tripod, you can use it for rear support here, and you're good to go. But that's a whole other video. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get into this, do the same thing again, let you get in position, and we'll kind of walk through. If there's anything that's glaring, I might stop you like I did last time. <laughs> Fair. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. All right, sounds cool. good. And go. Yeah, so use that front hand for as much stability as possible. You need to find the target. Yep, I'm gonna try to free recoil like you said. Uh, I think I was high. I think my back end started dropping and I didn't, uh, yeah. Okay, so that first run was really good. 
uh, in your flow to get into the position. That looked really good that way. Yep. So um, keep that going. And then, like I said, just get down in there, get comfortable. This is a situation where you kind of really need to know where that target is from the landmarks because now you get down to there, it's going to look slightly different. Right. So just have an idea that you know, like it's there's that little bit of a V mark in the in the below the road at the top of the at the top roundabout of the road. Yeah, okay. landmarks make sense. Yep. Okay. Ready All right. and go. impact okay how'd that feel good uh, i was trying to keep the uh, rifle as level as possible held my breath way too long <laughs> so that kind of nipped me in the butt a little bit i actually thought i was going to miss that one uh, but then i think what saved me in the end was the uh, the cleaner trigger pull cool okay let's try it again here and not hold our breath <laughs> yeah <laughs> and go Make sure you check that cant. Impact. Nice. Yeah, that was that was better. I didn't feel like I had to rush because, well, not even rush. Uh, the breathing, it just everything kind of flowed together. It was nice. I felt like I got on the bag quickly, and then uh, I was pretty far off to the uh, to the left. Uh, so I guess I thought. When I dropped the rifle down, I thought I was on target, but like I said, breathing helped and then the, tr the clean trigger pull. Cool, you wanna jump up to full speed then? Let's try it. Okay, let's try it for, so we'll try it for uh, 15 seconds again. Okay. Keep it at that consistent time in there and uh, see how she goes. All right, sounds good. Let me know when you're ready. Ready. Nice, smooth. No worries. I'd rather you take 17 <laughs> seconds and not and get your shot off than not get your shot off in that 15. So what I did in that one, make sure that's clear. Uh, as you can see, I was on the bag weird and then I was putting a lot of pressure, a lot of forward pressure on the rifle and it was making me constantly just- Move around a lot. Exactly. I was, okay. da I was dancing. So as soon as I, like you were saying, I pulled off, took that extra time and then I was able to get a clean shot off. Okay, let's uh, let me uh, let me throw a couple more rounds in there, and then we'll okay. do it one more time, man. All right. So we had like just over 17 seconds last time. Let's uh, let's see if we can do it 15 again. Sounds okay. good. Okay, stand by. Yep. Impact. Twelve ninety nine. Nice, nice job, man. Thank you. Good. Yeah, I think that's a solid run, dude. Yeah, for uh, you know, I've already seen an improvement from starting at the top there and us moving all the way down to the bottom. You're getting smoother, getting into the positions, understanding like you know how to that economy of movement once again of you know setting the bag down, setting the gun down, getting in, yeah. getting square, rock and roll. So no, I, yeah, uh, I agree with everything you just said. It's just the fact of starting with building the position which by building the position, I can then acquire the target. And then once I've acquired the target, now it's making that wind call and then focusing on that nice clean trigger pull and not just slapping it. Exactly. No, you uh, definitely are on the right track, man. All right, shooter stand by. Impact. Oh, uh, 13.28. Yeah, my safety came off. Yeah, I, know, I saw it. <laughs> That's it. It's sensitive, man. You, you barely touch it. I guess it's good, but also in a match to be bad. But yeah, no, it's good. I'm okay with that, with my safety coming on. Thanks, man. Honestly, first off, <laughs> you know, thank you for uh, running those, uh, run these drills and then just the, the different tricks and things to, to do at a match, honestly. Like, uh, I think I took away a lot in just a short amount of time that we're here. Um, 
starting with building that position and then just also, which then helps with acquiring the target. Absolutely. And then, you know, with uh, applying then, I didn't even think about it, applying too much pressure to the rifle would then obviously transition down range. I've heard of like, they talk about trigger pull and then, you know, gripping the rifle, but I would have never thought about my own body weight itself. So just that, those tricks um, to help. And then, I mean, obviously you pointed out, or you found definitely a lot of things that needed to be kind of tweaked on, but. Yeah, but definitely you took away like anything you did improper, we fixed, and then yeah. you continued on with it properly yeah. or more properly, right? Right. And, and it comes down to, too, like, you know, positions that I like to get into or, or you know, use might not be the same positions you want to use. Right. You're pretty similar height as me. When you're going watching other guys shoot matches, kind of pay attention to what they're doing as well in those positions. Like, you might find that, that going into a du double kneeling position is better for you eventually. Right. For me, it's not. <laughs> But, yeah. and it just comes down to that practice. Like if you can get a lot of good dry fire practice in and uh, really focus on that trigger control, that follow through, and then, you know, follow that up with some good live fire practice as well, right? Like, you know, we're up here two or three days a week, you know, shooting in the evenings or whatever like that, uh, or even go to a local gun range, shoot some 22 rim fire, yep. like anything like that's always good practice, man. Oh, so fair. definitely on the right track. I'm looking forward to seeing your next scores. <laughs> thank you. Well, guys, honestly, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it was it was awesome. Got out here to shoot. Nice weather and uh, the rain held off. I think it was supposed to rain today. And uh, yeah, just gonna keep practicing and keep plugging away, and hopefully I can uh, increase those scores next time. But thanks again for watching, guys. See ya. Cheers. <laughs> Red still filming. Yeah. <laughs>